This tutorial is on final cleanup line using the lead pencil. So in a previous video uh, showing how I got to the point of putting this one together with the tugboat and the, the sea captain. So this one I'm well on, on my way of finishing this up with uh, lead pencil. So what I thought I would do on this one is clean up and finish the sea captain for demonstration. So it, it is really important to take your time in doing your blue line. This one's probably darker than I'd normally do so that you can see it on screen. I'm going to zoom in. I just want you to see the whole uh, composition at this point. Uh, but we're going to concentrate on detail and line and, uh, you know, what the expectation is for a final cleanup. So I'm going to zoom in best I can. We'll start with the uh, captain's head and work our way around. Uh oh, it's getting... Yeah, let's not get too close. And I will... Fix our focus. There we go. So, uh, having a sharp pencil is really important. Um, you know, not super sharp to a point, but uh, to the width of the line that you'd like. Sometimes a little thinner because we can go over this a, a couple of times. Now, what's going to be really important, as uh, I may have demonstrated before, is uh, to have an extra piece of paper to put your hand down. And look already, I've made a smudge <laughs> on my uh, paper here. So we want to work as clean as possible so that we're not smudging or getting, uh, you know, uh, shavings over the artwork or hand into our artwork. So we want to be very careful. So again, I'm going to be shifting my artwork around uh, because I like uh, doing curved lines in the natural way that my hand likes to pivot. So I'm going to start on the top of the line here and I'll build it a bit, go over it to get the thickness I want. So when it comes to clean up, oh God, this is our first real attempt or really demonstrating and showing that. It'll take some time uh, to get to a point where you can do nice clean, clean up and really manage your pencil and uh, work with it to do a good cleanup uh, it's confidence so the more you do it the more you use your pencil uh, the better it's going to be uh, this is a pencil uh, it, it's a 2b uh, i've got a different make this is a black wing this is a high-end professional pencil uh, because it does give a very nice rich dark line and it is a pencil uh, and the reason why we do clean up in pencil is so that we can erase and fix things if we make any mistakes. And I'll go over that because I'm sure I'm bound to make one as I make this video. Um, so it's having a plan. Uh, working on the line. Again, we never do clean up with the... Uh, light tablet with the backlight on. Kind of use that, and in a previous video I showed how to use that backlight to get the clean up blue pencil. But we never do it for the final pencil. And that's because you end up getting very what I call wire bendy uh, sort of line, and you're not really seeing the line properly when you're cleaning up over top. So that's why we do the light blue line. And we can, you know, we've traced that back utilizing that light tablet. But now we want to make sure that we're focusing on that clean line. And that each line we put down represents the object that we're drawing. So we want to make sure we're getting the subtlety and we're connecting things and that we're creating that nice clean two-dimensional design you know those shapes that we're using to put this together it's a flat 2d drawing and that the lines that I'm working on represent those those shapes and those shapes are representing 
you know, in this case, our, our character, so, you know, just done uh, the triangle eyebrows I'm using. Just in a triangle for the nose. And the, the head basically is a square block. And then I'm using another triangle for the hair on the sides. I'm sure I'm keeping this in the frame, hopefully. Working on the ears. So, it, taking your time. Uh, I saved this video for cleanup so I can take my time and not rush it. So, part of the secret of doing... See, look at that. I kind of missed that one. So, I knew I'd make a mistake at some point. And, you know, sometimes we can live with our mistakes. Or, you know, we do want to go back and fix it. So, here's an opportunity for me to use that circle template that was uh, on your list that we talked about. What's great about this is uh, with the various shapes you can find the line you made a mistake with, line it up, erase away. It's a very good eraser so it's nice and clean. <laughs> there we go and it's virtually completely gone. Now I can go over and try and accurately follow the original line so that these shapes create the illusion of the mustache. Okay. So I've added some extra detail that he has his mouth open and he's gritting his teeth. There's kind of his bottom lip, this line, with maybe a little bit of beard hair coming out. Doing the rest of the beard. I might zoom this out a bit. This might be just a bit close. Um, but at least with my hand pencil and you can see, you know, the size. And this is why I like drawing big. Because if I'm going to get in there and do the best cleanup line, I'd like to have <laughs> as much room and space to do that. You know, this line here, big curve, what I prefer to do is rotate that so that I can get it. Here with that natural curve in my hand as I was talking about. Okay. Around. So we've got the head done. Taking a little bit. Let me just see. I'm going to try and zoom out just a little bit more. There we go. That's a little more comfortable. <laughs> For me anyways. <laughs> you Maybe you like seeing it that close. Uh, but this way I'm sure to keep it uh, on the screen and I'm not rotating the artwork right out of the, the frame. So I'm going to do the the arm here, clutching a hammer. So again, if I, whatever the object is, I want to keep that in mind. At the cleanup stage, I've done all my design, I've done my research, I've played around with proportions, I, you know, I've got it the way I want it. And when I've done the blue, I've thought about design and size and everything, and I've got all that taken care of. So now when I'm cleaning up, all I'm concentrating is the quality of the line. I'm not worried about the creative aspect of the design and the object and all of these things. I'm just worried about concentrating on the line to make sure that it is of the best quality and that this comes across exactly as intended. And I haven't done a rushed, poor job that makes the structure, the design, all fall apart. Okay. Moving apart here. So as I was mentioning before, uh, being in a good frame of mind to work on this and have no distractions. This is where having a good workspace, quiet as best you can, and... You know, lock your door if you're in a room and make sure, you know, if there's others in your house you're sharing or at home, that you let everybody know, I am working on a project and I'm trying to finalize it and I need full concentration. Please do not disturb. Have a do not disturb sign on your door. Whatever it takes to make sure that you've got 100% concentration and you're working on this. 
And two, uh, things to worry about when you're doing cleanup or things to be prepared for. And that is deadline. If you're doing something like this where cleanup is required and uh, particularly this one being your first attempt at it, that uh, you don't want to rush it. Hopefully you've plotted out your strategy and scheduled getting this done. And one of the things that are sure to affect the quality of your work is if you left it to the last minute. If you left it to the last minute, you're going to panic and you're going to rush. Clean up is something you don't want to rush. Actually, I find myself, if I start rushing, I notice it starts getting sloppy. <laughs> and I'm not doing that great a job. And it's not looking crisp and clean. I'm making lots of mistakes. So if that's the case, I'm going to moving things to get my curved lines in. So if that's the case, and I find that uh, I'm rushing, sometimes it's not due to not having enough time. Sometimes I just get bored. I'm <laughs> going, I want, I uh, like the creative part. Maybe this isn't my favorite part of uh, putting a design or a background layout together. Uh, you know, I want to come up with a concept, not so much do the, client, uh, the, the cleanup final on this. Oh, got another pencil mark here that I'll try to erase. There we go. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to get this in the center. Yeah, it's not recommended to be doing a video <laughs> and commentating, so a little hard to concentrate sometimes. Uh, this was even more difficult uh, in the classroom and having you know everybody there physically on seeing them staring at the screen and what you're doing can get nerve-wracking and uh, not the best scenario to be doing some high-end finished work. So, uh, getting the surroundings right and again rushing is not good and a guarantee not to rush is to don't do it too close to the deadline because you will absolutely start rushing as you realize oh, got a little bit of pencil there that's where my friend here come in handy just to clean that up that uh, it's going to be a bit time consuming especially if you haven't done it before uh, you might even want to do a practice one. I know even before I did, you know, I've done this one over a few times as demonstrations in years past. And each time I tweak and fix and have a slightly different approach to the sea captain. But, again, when you're clean up, you just want to concentrate on the line. Go. And I'm doing it freehand. I'm not using rulers or anything. So if I have a straight line, uh, again, that's confidence. That's uh, practice. Yeah, I guess what I was going to say before is uh, before I got into the full depiction here, the full illustration design of my 2D drawing, I just did a test blue uh, with just the captain, and I practiced on him. And once I figured out or had my confidence up, then I went to uh, the whole illustration and traced that all out and started cleaning up everything. And again, these can, after a while, start to just look like lines. And you don't want it to. i got to make sure I know that's an arm and it's bent and there's an elbow in there. So I want to be thinking about that when I'm drawing and when I'm cleaning up to make sure it looks like what I intended it to. So I don't want it, as I said before, to be wire bendy or just abstract lines that are not coming together. But the unity we're talking about. I want the lines to come together and really represent 
what it is that I'm drawing, even if it is a finger. Here, just make that line darker here to join that up. You can see on these ones here, I'm using the, a constant line, line weight, but if I want to show some overlap, a little bit of depth, then that's difficult when we're just using uh, 2D shapes. So I'm using a heavier line where things might overlap. So I'm kind of having a shadow with a light source being above uh, to give us an idea that, okay, I want it to really, very difficult when it's flat, two-dimensional, that these are the rungs of the back of the chair. Uh, adding this dark line now seps uh, separates it from the background and what's happening there. And the reason why we're concentrating on line is that instead of shading and using color pencils and things, we want to master a nice, clean, nice line. And then all our color and shading and everything is all going to be done digitally in Photoshop, which we'll touch on next year. Uh, so we can plan color schemes and things when we get to uh, final film production. On your final films, we, you know, we can experiment and take a look you know, what are the colors that we want to use? We want to always explore things before we just dive in and uh, do them. So, you know, and that's how the industry works too. Uh, there's a design department and then there's a color department. The design department very rarely will do the color as well. They will do the, sometimes you get departments divided right up. There's concept. And they might do some color, but it's really the concept of the characters and the environments and props and things. But then, you know, to really nail down the design, it goes to the design department. The design department's working on concept, uh, well, taking those concept drawings and defining them, really making them work, and then doing that cleanup. And then that cleanup will go to a paint department. And quite often that is, uh, they'll explore colors for characters, uh, but the paint department will do the final backgrounds in a 2D film for sure. They'll paint up the background so they're actually used in the production. Oh, I really messed that one up. I don't know if I can salvage that one. That one's a tough one. Uh, I'll see what I can do here. That's what I mean, uh, distraction me talking away here trying to remember my points <laughs> and then I totally was not paying attention to what I was drawing here sometimes that happens too is that the pencil gets too thick so I need to sharpen it a bit so I can keep control of the line so it's either having a few sharpened pencils or having a sharpener nearby of which you can Constantly be sharpening that pencil. So, anyways, we're getting there uh, relatively quickly here with nothing too disastrous happening. A couple little mistakes. So, again, I'm trying to be as meticulous as possible. And I'm hoping this is what you're going to practice. Again, my expectations are I know that if you've never done it before so here just throwing in the deep end and give it a try uh, the other thing I can recommend as I'm coming close to the end of this is uh, not only being the right frame of mind and such and uh, doing this at the best time of day where you're most alert don't want to be tired sleepy other thing I highly recommend is that uh, Making sure that you have as, uh, hang on, I want to zoom out on this again, there we go, that he's all come together, uh, that your, um, yeah, I'm going to start doing the clouds as I finish here, keep them a thinner line, rather abstract, well not clouds, it's smoke out of the chimney of the, of the uh, tugboat. So what I was going to say is uh, not only the time of day that you work on something like this so that you're not rushed, so not leaving it to the last minute and trying to beat the clock to get it in on time, uh, working on the deadline, 
yeah, also uh, finding the right time when you're most alert that you got <laughs> the best time of day where you got a good steady hand and I recommend that uh, if you're a coffee drinker uh, yeah don't have a few cups of coffee and then try to do a nice uh, steady line uh, you know with caffeine or even if you're a soft drink drinker and you've got you know, a day's worth of caffeine and you and you couldn't have a steady hand no matter what the situation so lots of things to consider as a professional you'll learn and you'll practice these things and find out that uh, yeah okay I find I work better at this time of day I you know You'll see that you'll make sure if you're, you know, your caffeine intake and uh, that you're not trying to clean up after a big party the night before. <laughs> not that I think there are any of those going on nowadays with the, the situation out there. But one time we'll be back and it'll be something to consider. Um, yeah. So again, talking about getting that nice line and not making it all wavy and shaky and such. And again, a lot of that has to do with experience. With experience comes confidence, and you'll be able to do a nice finish line. So again, that only happens with uh, practice. So it'll only happen doing lots and lots of drawing. Again, when you have this one cleaned up and finished, and you scan it and submit it. So here, I'm not sure if this is all the way out here. So you can see this is pretty much mine completed uh, with the and the uh, the character and uh, you know, the pier and all my other bits here, trying to make an interesting composition and telling a story so uh, with that uh, good luck uh, again uh, getting this done for deadline try not to rush not panic and the idea is you get it in on time uh, this one I will have a rubrics and a marking uh, not only you know your design and your composition and how you use the shapes but also your cleanup line these are all individual categories i will be evaluating and if you fall short on any one of them uh you can resubmit again the dropbox will be open to the end of the semester it is required for you to meet the deadline and after that deadline and once you've gotten feedback and you got marks and such and we review this uh you can you know if you have time uh, before you know we get heavy into other projects and things is you can revisit and redo it and resubmit it for again I reward uh, effort so I get put in the effort and the main thing here is not so much for marks it's to get your quality up to get your ability up and uh, something like this would be something you could put in your portfolio until you come up with something better so we want it to be the best you can so it can represent your abilities uh, to this point in time Okay, great. See you, see you next time.